Greetings, adventurers. To the old and the brand new, thank you for joining me here today, where we're going to be talking about how to increase the medieval aesthetic of your campsite. Before we get into the video, I do want to make some disclaimers about the purpose of this video, just to avoid some confusion or questions that might pop up. The purpose of this video is medieval aesthetic, not textbook historical accuracy. This is living anachronism, not living history, and while I make my choices with a firm knowledge base in what was done, and I always try to get as close as I can, I am operating in a fantasy medieval adventuring scenario. So I am emulating a medieval look, I am not replicating one. So don't take what you see in this video and then roll up to a historical reenactment event thinking that you're going to be good to go. That is not what this video is for. This is much more for the personal use, maybe if you're at a LARP that doesn't have a strict aesthetic marshal or something like that. But this video is going to be enough to get some people who have never done this sort of thing before a good place to start, get you out in the field having some good old fashioned medieval fun. I'll also say that I am not giving you advice. I am sharing what I have discovered and what I personally do, but I make no claims that my way is the right way or that you must do as I do. Take what works for you, leave what doesn't, and go on your adventures in good faith. Lastly, the setup that I'm showcasing today is not intended to be a bushcraft survival or ranger camping setup. This is not meant for an overnighter. Think of it more like you're a fantasy adventurer or soldier on campaign and you've brought all of your stuff in on a carriage or a wagon or your manservant and you're planning on staying put in the same location for a long time. So let's start with a basic modern camp setup. This is the setup that I chose to use for this specific video. I could have gone with a canvas drop cloth or oil cloth tent and gone and made my own and I do plan on doing that in the future. However, not everybody has the time, money, or even desire to own medieval implements to this degree. If you were saving up money and your choice was between buying your first sword and paying even double or triple the money for a period accurate waterproofed tent, I wouldn't blame you for passing the tent, picking up the sword, and then just sticking with the modern tent that you already have. Probably most people already own or have access to these modern items already, and so the point of this video is really to help spruce this up and make it look as close to this as possible without having to spend thousands of dollars or work hours crafting. And for those of us who want even more medieval immersion and historical accuracy, we have future videos to look forward to. So we have our modern tent, a modern military cot, a modern sleeping bag, and a modern backpack. And so to make the point about how easy this is, and also to make it as unintimidating and accessible as possible, let's start by just swapping out some of these items one at a time. That makes it a long-term building process for this project, and it's also kind on your wallet. So the first thing that I did was opt for using a medieval wooden style tent pole instead of the modern trekkers poles that were originally marketed as going with this tent. I do have a video on how you can uh, make one of your own here. It's not going to work for every tent style, but if you have a tent style that uses trekkers poles, this is maybe a good way to go. I then swap out the modern backpack for a more medieval looking option. Now I've talked about this backpack in a couple of other videos. It is not historically accurate. It is a waxed canvas backpack and it is my go-to. I got it specifically because it reminds me of the backpacks that the hobbits use in Lord of the Rings. But because we're not actually backpacking into the tent site, our carrying vessels can vary. We can use uh, wicker baskets made into backpacks. We can use the Viking frame pack as pictured here if you want to try making your own one of those. Or you could even try grabbing a small chest. They might not be that hard to come by if you're lucky at a thrift store or garage sale. Next, let's switch out the modern sleeping bag for some wool blankets or cloaks to use as a bedroll. This is going to look more medieval both while in transit and then also when it's laid out ready for use. You could also use your bedroll as a backpack if you were so inclined and weren't planning on bringing that many items with you to begin with. If you were going to do this, I recommend that you still bring a small haversack just in case you need something to carry resources that you're gathering so that you don't have to take your bed apart every time you leave camp. This also helps solve the problem of the cot because all you need to do is just drape the blanket over the edge of the very modern looking cot and all of a sudden it's hidden. And I think you'd be surprised how many reenactors seem to use tricks like this, like 
like hiding coolers or microwaves in chests. And then I did see a 19th century Civil War reenactor literally use one of these modern cots and just drape a couple of nice looking blankets over it. Nobody needs to know. And because the only material in a modern cot that's changed is really the frame of the cot, it's probably still gonna feel pretty comparable to what an actual medieval cot would feel like. And just like that, we've replaced and hidden most of the items aside from the tent, which isn't going to change. But that means we can now start adding additional items to help further boost our medieval aesthetic. The first thing I do is add my sword along the side of the tent pole. I just tie it on, and it's mostly for decoration, as the size and angles within my tent make drawing the sword both dangerous for all the rest of my possessions and also impossible. You could also try putting a throw rug on the bottom of your tent floor. This will help instantly it and give it a more cozy feeling, or you could take another rug and throw it outside your tent so that you have something to wipe your feet on. That'll help keep the tent as clean and cozy as possible. Just something about putting rugs in tents it seems like a very medieval thing to me. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's because it's just something that I don't see done very often, and then because it's so odd and strange, it tricks my brain into thinking that somehow we're in a different time period. Maybe I know that's exactly why putting throw rugs inside of tents works, and I'm presenting it to you as a question to make you think that I'm dumber than I actually am. Next, you could try adding banners or tapestries to the inside or exterior of your tent. I don't have a tent shape that is conducive to adding large rectangular square pieces of fabric to it, but as tapestries are essentially just rugs for your walls, this seems like a pretty good idea. Now, in addition to whatever initial carrying vessel you chose, whether that was a backpack, or a crate. Let's look at adding some larger storage containers as well. Look at the difference between this empty corner, this corner with a pile of stuff in it, and this corner with a chest in it with a pile of stuff inside. Who doesn't love a nice chest? Don't have a chest? Consider a basket. Don't think you have a basket? Look again. I bet you have one somewhere. Now go ahead and add some furs. Some of these are concepts that I've gone over in an older video about medieval aesthetic and decor. You can check that out up here. And since tents are essentially just soft-sided, semi-permanent houses, a lot of the same concepts will still apply. Using furs will help add to that rustic, cozy medieval aesthetic that we're going for. Why do I associate medieval dwellings with being cozy? Probably for the same reason that I think urban chic lofts are hideous. No offense if you happen to live in a glass concrete box. Now you could try adding some medieval inspired furniture in or around your campsite. Take these Viking style chairs for instance. Simple as they appear to be, I haven't made one yet, but I am experimenting with this plank of wood. But a log or a fur pelt would do just fine while you were sitting around your campfire. I'm experimenting with this wood plank specifically because I think that it will help hide the modern cot, and then I can also use it as a seat or a table if need be. And especially in the soggy environment that I'm filming in, it is a very welcome thing to stand on solid ground. And finally, as I talk about in my medieval aesthetic and decor video, lighting is incredibly important to achieving that right medieval mood. Now you are not supposed to use candles inside your tent, and I am not recommending that you do that. However, I have done this, and it is incredibly calming, and I have had people from the outside of my tent comment how cool it looks from the interior. It's also incredibly practical. I think you'd be surprised how much heat a little candle can generate within an enclosed space. But if you're a smarter and safer person than me, and you're not planning on giving yourself carbon monoxide poisoning just because you want to look cool, electric candles or lanterns are probably a happy medium between a modern light source and something that's going to help give you that medieval feel. Just look for something that has orange light rather than bright white light.
Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you found some inspiration for your own adventures. If you are joining us for the first time, I'd like to invite you to uh, add yourself to our ranks by hitting that subscribe button down below and you can check out some of my other content and playlists here. I hope to see you again soon, but in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.